Okay, I guess nobody was really surprised when I did this video for Kitty, but GNOME can be customized too, and sometimes it can be customized better than Kitty in some specific cases. So today I put together like seven very crazy GNOME custom customizations, so let's look at them because some of those are like... And we immediately start with one that I thought was completely fake, actually, but no, it isn't, it's completely real. So this is the video, and first of all, this showcases the use of the FlyPy extension, which, by the way, is made by the person that recorded this video, which is a very nice shortcut that allows you to open applications or invoke shortcuts or open URLs. And it also showcases a lot of very nice effects when you open and close windows. These are implemented by the extension burn my window, still made by the same person. And then for the big reveal at the end, after using Blender, we can actually see GNOME in 3D with the desktop cube uh, extension. Still, by the way, made by the same person and it, it looks gorgeous and I just love how it adapts to the other parts of the GNOME desktop. As an example, it, it looks flat when you open the overview, but then you just change the perspective and everything gets into 3D. It's so well implemented. I, I was shocked. I thought this was fake. Totally. If this video isn't enough for you and it isn't for me, then you also get another one with more Burn My Window effects, this time pixelated. And if that's not enough yet either, well, then you also get this video with the Rick and Morty effect because j just wow. Wow, wow. Funnily enough, I think these effects are also. Um, you can also use them on Kitty Plasma, I think, but this is a GNOME video, so I haven't even looked. Going on, there's this one, which really I think is meant to showcase the switch from night mode to light mode through a script that was written by the author of this video. But you do also have a lot of other interesting elements. As an example, on the bottom you have this volume visualizer, which is actually Kava or C A V A running in a transparent terminal, which is pretty cool. I didn't think about that. You have a custom JTK theme, which you can find in the thread, which is linked in the video description. And you do also have the project drop down terminal, which you can install in GNOME. And by the way, there's a Kitty application which is also meant to do exactly that. It's a drop down terminal. It's called Yakuake, if you want to try that one out. I think it's a pretty cool uh, concept, especially because it stays the same one in all the virtual desktops that you switch between. So you have kind of this terminal that's always the same one, regardless of where you are. That's pretty cool. And of course, you can also switch between light and dark mode. This is showcased by the video, but there's lots of way to do that nowadays. Still, it's pretty cool that it automatically changes the theme of the applications too, but I mean, you get the idea. Then there is this one, which I, I looked at and thought, uh, uh, Gnome, <laughs> is it you? Is, is it actually Gnome? Is, is yes, it is! Okay, so if I understood this correctly, it is GNOME, but I think there's an extension that is removing the default dock. Just kidding, there is no dock in GNOME out of the box, forget about that. And I think this is using the projects EWW and Waybar, etc. for actually displaying the system tray, the top bar and the widgets. So I think those are kind of custom. And if you do want them, then the author has shared their dot files. So you can just check those out. But what truly really drives this home, in my opinion, is the choice of colors. Because yes, you can have all the fancy stuff in the world, but you do have to get colors right. And in this case, these pastel colors are just perfect. And if you don't like this version, there's also another one, still pastel colors, but with flowers. And I mean, how can you not love this? <laughs> just look at it, just look at it. Okay, so then we have this one, which is very exciting because it's a combination of a desktop and a phone uh, themes. So one is GNOME and the other one, of course, is Android because iOS, nobody actually uses that. 
On the GNOME side, I do want to point out that Blur Meshal extension, which you can see in the last screenshot, just looks awesome. And if it was up to me, it's not sadly, but if it was up to me, I would just put Blur Meshal out of the box in the GNOME experience, but uh, for enough, you do you. On the Android side of things, I think it's also really impressive and I have no idea how that's done, that you also get the wallpaper or at least part of it on the top of quick settings. I have no idea why it's there, but it looks pretty darn good. So, wow. The bottom dock is very pretty, in my opinion, although if it was up to me again, in some way that probably would have taken me months to set up, I would have made sure that there was blur behind the dock, because I do think that all the transparent things should be blurred behind. In fact, I do think that everything should be blurred. That's just my take, but I would have blurred behind the dock. Nonetheless, it's very cool and the GTK theme, which just fits everything so nicely, is called Colloid or Colloid or Colloid. <laughs> then we have uh, this entry, which is GNOME. However, the actual interesting part of it is the wallpaper, really. And it's taking it's taken shit and it's taken from a set of like 14 to 15 different wallpapers that are uh, spanned in the same place like the, you have the same subject in the art in the wallpaper but throughout a day so all the colors changes going from sunrise to sunset and the night and it's just awesome you have this uh, deer reindeer that just walks around and uh, it works so well. So what's the GNOME part of this? Well, there is uh, this little script, which I think you can find on FlatApp, which changes the wallpaper depending on the time of day. So you can have this wallpaper, so 15 different versions of it that change depending of, on what time is it. So ju just wow, and the, the art is beautiful. So kudos to everybody involved for implementing this. And we finally get to my favorite one, which is Materia Shell. And uh, I, I mean, this is Material Shell. I, I've used it a lot in the past, actually. I think I've done a video about it already. It does a lot. So I think it's, first of all, quite a testimony to how powerful extensions in the GNOME world are. This is where they totally beat KDE as an example. Why? Because you could achieve something like this in KDE, however, it would take hours to set up, even though probably somebody has done it before you. However, in the GNOME world, extensions are just one single package that, that, that can modify multiple things, and you just have to install that one and turn it on, and with just one click, everything is already set up. You kind of have that idea with uh, global themes in KDE, but it's not as powerful and there aren't as many that change the behavior this much. So what's the idea? So you have a top panel which shows all the uh, open applications and how you would like to tile them. So some quick tiling buttons, that's super useful and I totally love it. And then on the left, you have activities or sort of, you can create a new one quickly, which is totally better than what KD does with activities in my opinion and you can switch between them. So basically you have this special uh, workflow where you can move around to the left, to the right, to switch within an activity between different applications or between activities top to bottom. So that's pretty cool. It's a concept that I truly love actually, but the reason why I don't use this is that I think it relies a lot on the idea like whenever you restart the computer, you should get back to your uh, windows in the same place. And they kind of managed to do this, but of course uh, everything is lost in like what you were watching. So basically no application has a good recovery support after being uh, closed and reopened. So sadly enough, I don't think that idea works as well as it should be to give everything sense because otherwise you're just setting up all this rather complex spatial uh, place in fact and uh, as soon as you restart the computer everything is lost so such a cool idea it's a bit of a shame that applications don't support this as well as they could
Okay, uh, before we get to the very last one, I just wanted to quickly say that this channel, in order for everything to work, for me to do my thing and for other people to do other things, and we need money. That's the idea. You know, it's like Bernie Sanders asking, uh, I need your financial support again. So I do have a goal for 700 euros a month. We are not there and uh, the month is slowly coming to a stop, like we're midway through, more than midway. So if you're able to chip in something that would be awesome, that 700 manages to make everything still go on and uh, work as usual. I've got Patreon, LibraPay, uh, Ko-Fi, PayPal, any, anything, anything will be helpful. And thank you so much to all the people left and right that actually you know chip in something that helped me with this channel and with my kd involvement so thanks everybody as i was saying the last one let's get back to this color scheme last one this one uh, we are still in the realm of original content that is this was actually implemented by the person that recorded this video which as always you can find in the video description and what's what's here so first of all we do have i did notice this it's not the main topic but we finally have a panel in gnome that is blurred behind it which is so pretty. I have no idea how it's implemented. I uh, luckily the original poster did not give details, but uh, this shows that it's possible. Yay. But of course the main point is the animation on when you log out. This is a nice anima animation that was implemented by this poster and uh, it's implemented in um, HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And I think this quite shows like how yes like gnome is not KDE, i will say that however you can still do a lot of customizations so i do think that the gnome project is awesome as much as i use KDE, obviously and i would totally love to see more and more setups very specific setups that do this kind of things so if you use gnome I urge you to try out different things and uh, see how you can customize it, but obviously it's not uh, strictly necessary. That said, uh, I'm very happy that you made it through the end of the video, which is blue. <laughs> and I, I, I don't, I, I'm gonna do more videos, so you know, check them out. Did I pronounce uh, customization correctly every time this time, or did I get it wrong? Custom, customization. I'm learning English slowly.